OK, well, hi, everybody. Welcome to the session Iron Ruby for the .NET developer. My name is not Scott Allen. For those of you who saw the session in the uh, open call for content, my name is Corey Foy. Uh, Scott Allen and I both submitted a bunch of Iron Ruby sessions. He got selected and decided to go to Scandinavia, such as life sometimes. Uh, so this session will be uh, an introduction into what Iron Ruby is and why you should care about it from a .NET developer perspective um, and what, what kind of the Ruby language is all about. How many people are using Ruby now in some capacity? How many of you are full-time Ruby developers? Anybody? There's one. <laughs> who, who's a .NET developer? And what else is out there? Anything? That's it. OK, good enough. So the, let's start initially by just saying, what is Iron Ruby? And, and what really is Ruby all about? So we'll start by actually digging into a little bit of code here. So if I go and look at. So can you all see that OK? I'll take your, uh, so the way this will work is if you don't say anything, I'm going to assume you're fine with it. And we'll, uh, we'll make contractual obligations later. So this is a typical Ruby class. So Ruby is an object-oriented, dynamically typed language. And so we see here we're actually creating a class called Talker. And we have an adder accessor, which is effectively like a property in .NET. We have initialize, which is the constructor. And we've defined a method here called talk. And then in this same file, we're, actually, we're um, instantiating an instance of the, the object and calling a method on it, and then updating the, the object and calling the method again. So if we run that, you'll see what happened is it ran hello Corey and hello mix 10. So pretty straightforward. I think we can all understand the syntax of, of what this is. So what we're looking at here, this is straight Ruby. This has nothing to do with Iron Ruby at all. This is just the normal Ruby syntax. Now, we did run this through the Ruby interpreter, which means all of this was converted to the CLR before it ran. But the power of the CLR allows us to actually um, grab various objects from the, the uh, CLR, from C Sharp, from .NET, that kind of thing. So if we look at hello world Ruby, this is the same exact class, but instead, we're getting the system date time instance. And so that, that is a CLR object. And if I run that, you'll see it turned around and grabbed the, the example from, from date time. So again, pretty straightforward. The other interesting use of, uh, well, actually, before we get to the other interesting use, uh, it can't, it, uh, Iron Ruby is not just about dealing with console apps and, and libraries. So here we're, we're dealing with system Windows Forms class. So if I run this, we can uh, instantiate Windows Forms instances as well. So I, hello world RFB. And there's our little itty bitty Windows Forms saying hello Corey. And then another one saying hello Mix 10. The, the third interesting usage of Ruby within the .NET world is with Silverlight. And whenever Iron Ruby first came out, that was a real big push was, how do we use Ruby inside Silverlight? So you have Iron Ruby and Iron Python, which are both dynamically typed languages that run in the DLR, and they're both capable of being run in Silverlight. So if we look at our Silverlight class here, oops, uh, we'll do this. This is a very standard, so if I, uh, I'll initially open the app XAML. So this is just a standard, if you've, if you've worked on Silverlight, you've done WPF, you know what the XAML is, it's pretty straightforward. But instead of a code behind and written in C Sharp or VB, we have our code behind written in Ruby. So you see here we're getting the, the root element and we're adding a, a text blocks to it, uh, or a text block to it and setting the values of it. And then, let's see, so we can run this. CHR using the Chiron. And there's our Hello Mix 10. So this is all Silverlight. Uh, the, yes, I am running OS X. Yes, this is using Mono. Uh, yes, I and Ruby is running on Mono with this, but we are using uh, very native Silverlight integration with that. 
So that's, that's kind of a very quick whirlwind of what IronRuby is and what the language looks like. So let's talk about a little bit of history of how we got where we are. So back in 2003, uh, a, a guy named Thomas Sondergaard posted to the Ruby laying list saying, you know what we really need? We need a Ruby implementation running on .NET, or that bridges over to .NET. Because the .NET world is large, as we've seen from this conference, as we see from a lot of Microsoft conferences, there's a lot of .NET developers. And it'd be really great to be able to reach out to them with Ruby and show them the power of the language. So Thomas created the first Ruby to .NET project, and that was followed up by a Ruby CLR project. This, the, the Ruby CLR project that's in the middle was funded by Microsoft uh, and by the Queensland University of Technology to make Ruby run on the CLR. And you would think that that is what involved in the Iron Ruby today, but it, it turns out it's not. John Lamb, who was hired by Microsoft in 2006, created his own Ruby CLR implementation. And the challenge that all of these had and, and why it was so difficult to get a lot of traction and why a lot of us thought, boy, this is just going to always be a niche, was that we were trying to run on top of the CLR. And the CLR is a very difficult thing to just pop a dynamic language on top of. And, and that's because there really isn't a lot of dynamism to, to uh, CLR 2.0. So for those of you who, who, don't, who get confused, there's uh, CLR 1.1, CLR 2.0, and CLR 4.0. .NET 3.0 and 3.5 were base cost libraries that were added on top of CLR 2.0. Um, so there is a pretty fundamental difference coming in with .NET 4.0. We have a new runtime coming in as part of that. But in, in 2.0, everything had to be compiled. And what we ended up with was a lot of magic making, making all of this happen. And to give you an example of the magic, let's take a look at this method. And this is from John Lamb's blog of something that he did to get a count. Um, and he, what he would do is whenever you would call the count method, he would, uh, Ruby has this thing called method missing, which we'll get into in just a minute. But he would catch that you were trying to call count, and he would walk into IL code to actually um, marshal values back and forth across the .NET framework. And as you can imagine, trying to do this across all of these Ruby classes, or thinking about all the possibilities people could use code, was, was a bit of a difficult um, challenge. So in, in CLR 4.0, uh, we got this new thing called the dynamic keyword. So who has not heard of the dynamic keyword? Who's excited about the dynamic keyword? It's exciting. Woo! So the, if you haven't seen the dynamic keyword, this is not it. This is how we normally do object instantiation and object method calls. So here we're saying get calculator, so we're getting some instance, and we're calling an add method on it. And if we write this code in Visual Studio and we compile, it's going to want that add method to be available in the calculator class. Now, what we got in 3.0 and 3.5 was an interesting new keyword, and that was called var. So what was the difference between the code I just showed and this one? That's right, yeah. So the only difference is that the, the type inference happens at compile time instead of actually having to be declared. So there still isn't dynamic dispatch. The add method still has to be present on whatever object the compiler resolves the var to be. If we wanted true dynamic dispatch, what we had to do was this, which was reflection. And reflection is a nasty beast. So here we're getting the type. We're invoking a member that's on there, passing in an object array, converting the result back that we wanted. It's not a very fun way to have to write an entire language by doing this kind of thing. So in CLR 4.0, the dynamic keyword, we're effectively able to get the power of this by just typing that. So what happens here is that 